Hello, everybody. I'd like to uh, show you how to create um, a shooting gallery game using Game Maker Studio version 2. So this works with version 2, and I'm at my online repository. Uh, I want my students to use Git uh, for all of their projects, and so I've created this sort of initial setup for this particular project. It's got all the art assets. It's got the intro for the project called Shooting Gallery. And so to get started, and any of you watching this, you can go. This is a free uh, repository. It's open. It's live. You can just go to this link. I'm going to post it on the YouTube channel. And you can either download it as a zip file if you don't want to work with Git. But if you're a student of mine, you need to use Git. Um, I'm, I'm requiring that for all of my projects. So what you do is you go to the clown, clone or download. We call it the clown load. Uh, that doesn't sound right. Okay, anyways, clone with HTTPS, click on the little clipboard there, and then what you want to do is create a folder. Now, I have this folder called Shooting Gallery. I want to put my project right into that folder. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to get uh, Git, Git installed, which I already have it installed, but if you don't have Git, you can install it uh, going to git-scm.com. You can download it for whichever kind of computer you have. And once you have it, you'll be able to do the next couple of steps. Once you have it installed, you right click on a folder where you want to put your project files and you choose Git Bash here. Okay, this opens up this window. You're going to type Git in it. And what this does is it turns this into a Git tracked project. So we're going to get the whole history of our project here. So what we want to do now is we want to clone that repository that I just showed you here. I've already got this copied to the clipboard. So I'm just going to type git clone and I'm going to right click and paste. Oh, wrong. Sorry. <laughs> no. Okay, I got to go back. I got to back. Oh wait. So I got to I got to do this one more time. Click here. Now I can do it. Just right click and paste. And it does this cloning into. Okay. And so at this point, I go into the folder. I'm going to open up the folder and I'll show you the files. Here's the folder. Double click to open it. Now you'll see the shooting gallery set up. I open up here. Here it is. If you have Game Maker Studio version 2, you can just double click on this and it will open up in Game Maker Studio and you can begin working on it from there. Now, if you want to fork this, it's a fancy word for taking this project and doing something with it, which is what you are here for, I imagine. What you can do is you can take this Git one and you can connect this with your own Git repository. Now I'm going to use Bitbucket and I'm going to ask that my students use Bitbucket because they can have private repositories. Now if they're going to work on teams, they can uh, do team projects um, with Bitbucket. Uh, GitHub is free, but they're all public, and so I want students to have a little bit of security. They can work on their project and know that it's their own project, and they don't have anyone else raiding their own files. So for that, you'd get on Bitbucket if you want to do it. If you want to make it public, uh, that's fine. If you're not one of my students, go for it. Uh, I have to log in. I'm going to go ahead and log in, and then I'll continue. So I just used the, the uh, logged in with Google. I'm going to create a new repository. So I click on repository. Uh, I'm going to have this checked so it's private. And I'm going to call this shooting gallery. I'll put GMS v2, version 2. I'm going to use the Git uh, version control system. And I'm going to click create repository. This creates a repository. Um, we have nothing in here. So what we need to do is we need to take our local repository, push it to Bitbucket. So um, we're on the right folder. So now I'm going to copy all of this, which means I have to get all of that copied for this command. I'm going to copy that, go in here, and I type paste. And there, I've now connected it to this repository, and I'm going to push all of my files for the first time. You need to have that git push dash u origin master plug that in oops right click shift insert that's the way you do it at least on um oops. failed to push some all right let me try uh get oh hold on we already have it cloned oh i know what i need to do 
All right, I'm going to go into this folder here. So I'm going to copy that, Control C, uh, right click, copy, Control Insert, and then I'm going to type CD, Shift Insert. So this means go into that folder, and now I'm going to type get in it, reinitialized, get add dot, adds all my files, get commit dash M, initializing project folder. I'm going to put for Bitbucket. Now I'm going to go back to the one command where I had the git remote add origin. Oh, it already exists. So now I just need to get um, push dash u origin master. Oh, it's still wanting to go to GitHub. Okay, if I did it differently, I would change it, but check out what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to hit enter and I'm going to let this thing fail. Do, do, do. Okay, so that failed. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go back a file here. Uh, okay, so we have this stuff here. And one moment. All right, so I'm hiding some folders here. So I went to uh, click on the folder. I did the uh, organize folder search options. I go to folder options view, show hidden files, click OK. Now you see that thing that says git? I'm just going to delete it. By deleting it, it's no longer tracking under version control. So probably the better way to do it would just be to download the zip file, create your repository, and then from there do that. So I'm going to go back to folder. I'm also going to delete this too. I don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to type git bash here. Now I'm going to initialize it all over again. Get in it. Get add dot. Actually, let me do the up arrow. So as you do up arrow, you've got all the last um, commands that you did. And enter. Now I want to do the git remote add origin. I don't want the I don't I want to get the bit bucket one. So I'm going to go back to the bit bucket one and just grab that one more time. Paste. Hit enter. And now it's git push. You origin master. There, see now it's asking for the password, username and password for Bitbucket. So now I'm going to do the password for that. First password is wrong, we'll try it again. At this point, did it right, got the right password, so it counts the object, pushes all that stuff here. I hit refresh, and now I have my assets, my files, everything's in there, and I'm ready to work on this private repository. And anytime I do any new work, I can save my changes, commit them, push them, and I'll have the full history of my project in here. So now we're ready to get started. So now I just want to open up my files. I go in here, open up the folder, and I want to go to the shootinggallery.yyp, double click it, it'll open it up in Game Maker Studio. This only works Game Maker Studio version 2. So if you're using an older version, why not upgrade? The latest version is pretty good. Even the free version, you're limited on some of the things you can do, but it's still pretty awesome. Step one, let's load some backgrounds. We'll load some backgrounds for our room. So there's no longer a separate background. We're just going to do it as a sprite. So we're just going to right click and we're going to create sprite from images. We're going to go to our assets and we want BG images, background curtain, water, wood. I select all three. I click open. Oh, they put all three of them on here. I didn't want to do it that way. Let me redo that one. I'm just going to delete these again. Start over. All right. This is the BG curtain. And we'll go ahead and do that for the others. Oh, wrong one. Let me start over. Sprite from image. Background water. BG water. And BG wood.
for background wood. Once we have the sprite in there, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because I don't need it anymore. It was nothing. So I got my sprites. I'm going to go back to the room. I'm going to double click on the room. I'm going to make some edits to it. Uh, step number one, when I edit this, I want to get my little window open where I can edit this. Hold on a second. Sometimes windows kind of go away. I'm just going to click on layouts. And I'm going to click reset layout. Click yes. Double click on that room one more time. And there. So we have all this stuff here. So we're going to edit the room settings. We're going to do a couple things here. We're going to rename this. And we're going to do room underscore one. So we rename the room and we're going to adjust the width and the height 1024, 768. Nope, we don't have to adjust the height. We're going to leave it as is. We want our speed to be 30. So we want to click down. Let me just get this up a little bit higher here. I'm going to click on background, room settings, there we go, animation speed, this is what I want to change. So you have to actually click on background where it says animation speed, click on the lock, changes to 30. I'm going to make it 30 frames per second. Now you can make it higher if you want, but this, this tutorial is going to be built off of 30 frames a second. We're going to start by adding, having the wood be the background, so I'm going to click on Sprite, BG Wood, and I am going to horizontally and vertically tile that background. So that's what it looks like tiled as the background. So we got the wood as the background. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another background layer. I'm going to click on the background layer. So we have that one, and this sprite now, we're going to use the uh, BG, what do I think we're going to do next, curtain curtain like so and let's do a couple changes here all right so if you look at here that that image is so large I was trying to figure out what the heck's going on with that because you know we're going to want to horizontally tile it but that you can tell it's all pixelated it's way larger than it needs to be so I was trying to figure out what's going on so I went to the sprites and I double clicked it so I can edit it and look at the size of that sprite that is not the size of the sprite in the height so we need to get the original size and reset the size on there to match. So it turns out if I click on that image once, I look at the dimension, it's 256 by 80. So this is 256 is right, but the height is totally wrong. So we're not going to scale the image. We're going to re... Actually, we do need to scale it. It changes height to 80, but we got to uncheck this. We don't want to maintain the aspect ratio. So we're going to type in 80 and apply. There we go. That looks normal. Now we go back to the room and let's see if that's looking any better. Ah, there we go. That looks more like the curtain I was trying to do. We're going to horizontally, we're going to tile it horizontally so it goes across. Let me take that grid off so you can see what it looks like. There you have it. While we're at it, might as well look and see if the sprite for the background water is right or not. There's that invisible region so it might be okay, but let me just see what the original file is supposed to be. That one looks right. So now we're going to add one last one, which is the water. Now for water, we want it to appear above the ducky, so it looks like the ducky's behind the water. So the ducky is going to go on the instances layer. So I'm going to select instances, create a new background layer, and that's where the water is going to go. So now I pick the background water, and I horizontally tile that one. And so we have it. As long as instances comes below backgrounds two, any instance any sprite objects, you won't, you know, it'll be blocked by part of the water. And that looks good for our background. We're just about ready to do the next step, but I'm getting close to the end. So go ahead and test it out. Just run it and see if everything looks okay. And if that works, then you're well on your way to making your shooting gallery game. Stay tuned for later.